according to the authors of How Learning Works, mastery refers to the attainment of a high degree of competence within a particular area. The fourth chapter of their book and the main focus of this video is about how students develop mastery. The principle associated with mastery states, to develop mastery, students must acquire component skills, practice integrating them, and know when to apply what they have learned. Figure 4.1 from How Learning Works provides a simple visualization of the elements of mastery. Here we see how component skills form the root of mastery, and that mastery grows when learners have opportunities to practice integrating various component skills and eventually learn how and when to apply integrated skill sets at the appropriate time and space. Component skills are the essential foundation of mastery. If students lack critical component skills, or if their command of component skills is weak, students' overall performance will suffer. Experts have an ability to apply complex skill sets across a variety of unique circumstances, often doing so without much conscious effort. For this reason, experts possess unconscious competence. In short, experts are so well trained in their subject area that they can harmoniously apply a broad range of knowledge and skills that is actually quite complex. Difficulties arise when experts fail to break down their complex skill sets into basic chunks that more novice learners can grasp. For the purposes of teaching and promoting mastery, it is essential that students be given opportunities to acquire component skills as a first step. Of course, mastery does not result simply from acquiring component skills. As learners expand their knowledge base and familiarity with isolated skill sets, they must then learn how to integrate those isolated component skills with one another. Integrating component skills can be difficult and demanding for emerging learners. Even when students have had opportunities to practice skills in isolation, putting it all together takes time and effort. Depending on the complexity of a task, it may be helpful for learners to practice integrating smaller chunks of component skill sets before integrating the entirety of a process or procedure. Eventually, as students master those smaller chunks, instructors can expand integration of those chunks so that learners will eventually have success in completing the large and complex tasks that experts do. Once students have an understanding of component skills and possess an ability to integrate those skills, the next phase of mastery involves knowing when to use those skills. If students acquire skills but do not know the appropriate conditions for their application, they may fail to apply skills that are relevant to a task or problem, or they may apply the wrong skills for the context in which a problem exists. The application of skills to new contexts is referred to as transfer. There can be both near transfer, when the learning context and transfer context are similar, and there can be far transfer, when the learning context and transfer context are dissimilar. Experts often possess far transfer, that is, a way to apply their knowledge and skills across a variety of potential contexts that may arise in their day-to-day -day duties. FAR transfer is one of the key goals for most educational programs. In other words, we want students to appropriately apply what they have learned in a variety of unique contexts. If we assume this is true, the question becomes, how do we as educators help students achieve FAR transfer? Fortunately, to help us address such a question, the authors of How Learning Works offer several strategies to help students develop mastery. Here you will see some strategies to expose and reinforce component skills, strategies to build fluency and facilitate integration, and strategies to facilitate transfer. Click on each box to read more about the strategies associated with that particular group's focus.